My name is Bill Gady, and um, I'm a very famous nobody. We still don't understand how this universe works for all those invisible phenomena, for all those phenomena in which it, uh, there's an invisible mediator, gravity, light, electricity, magnetism. We don't, we don't understand how they work. And general relativity and quantum mechanics will not help you because they can only offer you know, uh, uh, irrational explanation. A particle can be at two places at once. This particle affects the other one from a distance. There's nothing in between except spirits. And space time is unimaginable and it's four dimensional. And so it's all irrational. You cannot picture any of it. Gauge boson, force carrier, bosonic particle that carries any of the fundamental interactions of nature. Carries a force, carries an interaction. Uh, does a bird carry his fly? Uh, does a fish carry his swim? Does a kangaroo carry his jump? Uh, I looked at Stephen Crosser's there, I remember the kangaroo. Uh, it, it makes no sense. This is irrational language. What do you mean you carry a force? How does a particle carry a force? They carry it in his back and then delivers it, delivers pull, delivers push. You cannot move an abstract concept in physics for the purposes of physics. I cannot say that love moves mountains, not literally, not in physics. I can say that a heart moves mountains because a heart is a physical object and a mountain is a physical object. I cannot say that a concept such as love moves a mountain. I cannot say that I warped time with gravity. I cannot say that I pushed a mass. I cannot say that I transferred information or energy. People go into Quora, for example, which is a site where you ask questions and you try to get answers. And 99.99% .99 of the people go in there that ask questions of physics and they ask questions like, you know, how does a magnet work? Uh, how does gravity work? They, they want to see a qualitative explanation. And they don't realize, first, that they're asking the wrong people. Second, these people are, are saying in so many words, look, we don't understand how any of this works. You want to understand it, take a math courses at the university level. And so the persons, you know, they, they ask a question, they never get an answer. They say, oh, I'm, I'm so puny, I don't understand any of this. You know, and they say, thank God we have all these mathematicians that do all the thinking for us. They, they understand all of it. Here we have the moon going around the earth. How does it do it? There's two pieces of, of, of stone. There's two stones, two rocks there. And we cannot explain why the moon doesn't fly away. Magic? There's nothing there? We, are we going to put a field? Okay, put a field. How does it do it? Please explain the magic trick. How does it do it? What's the physical mechanism of attraction? How does the field work? Is it like uh, paste, like glue? Is it like uh, tape? Is it like um, a vacuum cleaner <sighs> sucking the electron in? Why doesn't the electron fly away? What's the mechanism? It's not sufficient to say, oh, it's a field. I could have said X. It's X. So what have you learned? You need to know what the mechanism of the field is. I mean, you won't get an answer. You won't get an answer from any of these people. The, whatever answer they give you, for sure, 120% is irrational. In other words, you won't be able to picture it. Whether it's quantum or general relativity, you will not be able to picture it. Because as soon as you picture it, they'll say, oh, you, you took the analogy too seriously, too literally. You know, you're not supposed to take it. This is a mathematical description. And the only way you can put it into words is, you know, by giving you, you know, the warp space, you know, the uh, warp canvas analogy. We're not criticizing the equations. We're not saying that Schrodinger's equation is wrong. We're not saying that de Broglie's wave equation is wrong. We're saying that the explanations that they give us, the physical interpretations, are irrational. They're not wrong. They're irrational. They don't publish qualitative stuff. You read any paper in the literature today, it's all math. It's all equations. That's why nobody reads that. No one in the general public reads that nonsense. Because it's all just math taken to ridiculous levels today. You read any of those papers, it's just 
equations, 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 equations. You don't see any pictures in there. So you can't understand any. You can't visualize anything because there's nothing to visualize because they're not concerned about qualitative explanations, about causes, about, you know, mechanisms. And so when you submit a paper talking about qualitative stuff, you know, they reject it immediately. Because they say, look, classical mechanics died in the 19th century. Where have you been in the last 100 years? Now, I ask people, do you really believe you need to take calculus at the university level or linear algebra or whatever? Do you need to take all this math to explain this simple system? Here we have just two <laughs> magnets coming together. That's the entire system. Two pieces of metal. They attract each other. You would think that all you need to do is figure out what invisible thing is here between these two magnets. I can already feel them pulling to each other. All you got to explain, or in other words, all you really got to do is make visible what you think Mother Nature has between those two magnets. And because that's the entire system. If these were the only two things in the universe, how does Mother Nature do this? And the only way you're going to figure it out is by making the invisible visible. You got to make whatever object Mother Nature is using there visible, and then you'll understand the mechanism. We can explain this universe, at least one model can, and that's the rope model. And that's, I can explain mechanistically. I can explain to you on the board how gravity works with, with this model. I can explain light, uh, electricity, magnetism. I can explain all this. And you don't have to take my word for it. You just have to watch the movie. You know, I'm not going to tell you, look, it's unimaginable. It's four-dimensional. You can't see it. It's zero-dimensional-like or, or one-dimensional-like in string theory. But now we can see why the moon doesn't fly away. If every atom on the moon is connected to every atom on the Earth through electromagnetic ropes, then we have a physical restrainer. Now we see why the moon doesn't fly away. And uh, here we have the system, sun, earth, moon. Again, we can see why none of them flies away. They're all bound together by electromagnetic ropes. There's a physical restraint. I don't say field anymore. I don't say mass, time. I say, look, there's a rope. There's a bunch of ropes. Now we understand. Now whether you believe the theory, that's a different story. But I can give you a physical interpretation, something that you can put your teeth to. I'm saying that the invisible agents that mediate phenomena are the electromagnetic ropes. If we, if we make that assumption, then we can at least make some sense of this universe, and it's not hopeless. Thank you.